Okay, welcome to another C1 video, a slightly different one today. Hopefully you have finished my C1 course and watched all the videos for all the parts of the different parts of the exam. If you haven't, I recommend starting there. What we're going to do today is something slightly different. I'm going to correct one of the, the pieces of writing, very similar to what C1 student might send me, thinking about the criteria you need, thinking about how to approach these tasks. What have you done well? What can you improve? What you're looking at on the screen in front of you is hopefully the task that you will be doing. I recommend doing this task, you know, if you want to stop and try and do it yourself before you watch the video, that could be a good idea. It is a task from a video I made on reports and proposals. And you can see the task is asking you to write to evaluate the public transport system of the area where you live. What's available, the strengths, improvements and why they are required write a report. So we're going to look at what this student wrote and then I'm going to mark it as a real examiner would mark it, thinking about the different criteria, thinking about what makes a good C1 report in this case. This is how I would mark it for a normal student. You'll see all the different you know, how I do it. Right, let's get into it then. So what can we see? We can see straight away we've got a nice title. A report should have a title, so this I like. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to highlight this in yellow. You'll see my color system, what it means as we go through the video. Yellow I normally use for criterion B, communication. And here, it's a good convention, it's clear. I think that's good for a report. The aim of this report, okay, nice start. I'll underline that, it's a nice little phrase. Underlined, I tend to mean good, good use of language. Is to go over in detail through the different public transport system of a big city as it is Valencia. Okay, well, we've already got Google Docs underlining things for me, so there's a couple of little grammar mistakes. As an introduction, it's not too bad. It's, it's pretty clear what we're going to talk about. We're going over the public transport system of Valencia. That works for me as an introduction. In terms of language, we don't really need this, do we? So let's cross that out. We are going over the public transport system, or the different public transport, or if they're different, that's going to be plural. So we can mark that with a little green to say that's a language correction. Green refers to language corrections in the way I mark it. Of a big city as it is Valencia. And this doesn't quite work either, does it? A big city as it is Valencia. That doesn't sound quite right. You need to say a big city like Valencia or the big city of Valencia. And then I might even say big in a report. It's a little bit informal or personal or we might have a better way of saying this. So we might say something like a large, the large Spanish city of Valencia, something like that. So this we could maybe say, rewrite this little part. But first we would need to put our keyboard in English or in Spanish actually, because I've got my Spanish keyboard here. So here we could say in green, you need to rewrite this part to make it more accurate. To begin with, okay, we are linking our ideas together quite clearly. One of the most transport used nowadays, that's not quite right, is it? We need to say something like most widely used types of transport. So quite a large correction there. It's, it's one of these mistakes where I know what you're getting at, but it doesn't sound right. And it is nice to know how to use these superlatives. If you can use superlatives correctly in English, it's a grammar point that works well at C1. So one of the most widely used by, uh, this is a bit of a typical mistake, isn't it? We are talking about society in general, so we don't use an article. You think if you're saying the society that we live in, then that's the specific society is the society. But here we're just talking about society, no article. This is actually a, quite a typical mistake from this student, which we'll talk about at the end. Think about your typical mistakes and how to avoid them in the future. But anyway, we're talking about the bus. One of the most widely used types of transport is the bus. Okay, Valencia has lots of buses, lines, mm, bus lines, that would be, wouldn't it? Because what type of lines are they? Bus lines. It's not going to be, it's, we're using it as an adjective, so it's invariable, it's bus lines. That can take you to lot of different places. This is another typical mistake of this student using lot of, a lot of incorrectly. And I would even say this is doubly incorrect. I don't know how to do that, but lot of is a little bit informal. 
for a report, better to use something like many. One crucial point to consider. Okay, that's a nice way of introducing what you're going to say, isn't it? We've introduced what we're talking about, which we have to evaluate it, saying if it's good or bad, what's available, strengths, lots of lines, that's a strength. There are many bus stops where you can see which bus number is going to stop there. Because each number has a different route, you should look before if that number will fit to where you want to go. There are many bus stops where you can see which... This is a very long explanation. I'm not sure this is a clever use of words. I'm not sure this is the most effective use of words, answering the question we had, evaluating the public transport system, because I think we pretty much know how buses work, that you get on the bus, the, the number of which corresponds to your route. Is this worth spending 34 words on? I think we can say that more quickly. We don't, in a report, we don't need to tell people how buses work. We're evaluating the strength of the public transport system. Think about good and bad things. How buses work. I would say this is a little bit of a waste of words. So I'll put that in communication because it's not very concise. So I would improve this for concision. And think about how we can say this with less words. This public transport is low cost. Okay, that makes sense. And again, it's linked. However, is always crowd of people and special occasions you need to wait a lot of time until you can go up in the bus. Okay, I get the idea, but there's a few mistakes here. There is one mistake that I'm going to put in red. Ooh, why is he getting the red pen out? The teacher's got the red pen out. Because this is a mistake below C1 level. Missing the subject from a sentence is a mistake that you can't be making at C1. What is crowded? You need to say a subject in the sentence, it is always crowded. We know this is the, the word crowded. I don't know if that's a typo from when my student wrote it or if it's a mistake, but let's play safe and say that's a mistake. And here this is slightly redundant, isn't it? Crowded already means there's lots of people, so we don't need to say people. Here we would have to say on because we're talking about days and dates, so we use the preposition on on Tuesday so on a special occasion you need to wait for here we have the same mistake as before you can see I'm talking about repeated mistakes people tend to make the same mistakes so make sure you know your mistakes and don't make them again you need to wait for maybe we could say something a bit more impressive like I would suggest something like a lengthy period of time since we're writing a, a report here so we can use a slightly more formal expression until you can you get on the bus don't you you need to learn your phrasal verbs get on the bus get off the bus get in the car get out of the car but on and off for buses and planes and boats because you are on them like you are walking on them you know you're not in them like in a car you're on them but anyway the bus we have some relevant detail about the bus but quite regular mistakes and some parts slightly irrelevant on the other hand, the subway is also a commonly used transport. Transport, we can't say a transport because it's uncountable. So we need to say something like method of transport. And here, I might add this note in for my students so they understand my correction. But of course, this is uncountable. Transport's uncountable. You can't say a transport, a method of transport. I'm also not sure about this because we said the bus is widely used. On the other hand, the subway is also commonly used. Is this a contrast? You're saying two things are both commonly used. I don't think this is the right connecting word. Be careful with your connecting words. You need to show that you can connect ideas in a logical and coherent way. And I don't think this is quite right. They are more similar, these ideas. So it would be easier, better to say something like similar or likewise one of our similar connecting words to, to add similar ideas, still with a comma. The most strength this transport has, the most strength, no, I think we'd say the biggest or the main strength, something like this. Put that in 
green is the quick it is. The quick, no, we don't say the with an adjective, do we? We say how quick it is. How quick is it? It's very quick. The biggest strength is how quick it is. This is also slightly wrong with word order. In just a few minutes, you can be in, I've done that wrong, haven't I? In just a few minutes, you can be in the other part of the city. Okay, maybe on the other side of the city or something like that. But if you are in a rush, the subway is the best option. That I quite like. In a rush, good expression. And it's, you know, as, as we keep saying, this is relevant to the question. You're evaluating the transport. What is good about it? Okay. Other attendees said the same. Okay, this is a great point. This is a phrase that this student learned from a report that I gave them. And I said, you can use this report to judge, to try and take some phrases from, to try and, you know, boost up your English. But have they thought about it very carefully? Who are the attendees here? The report I gave them was from someone who attended a conference. Attendees make sense. Here, this is just people using public transport. Maybe we could say other residents, you know, people who live there, other people using public transport. So the point there is be careful when you are learning phrases, make sure you adapt them to your own writing. Other residents said the same, that the subway is the best option. Now it makes sense for a report because you are evaluating it and it makes sense to say what people like, what the local people think of it. One thing that has in common, oh, we're going to have to do the same thing again, aren't we? These mistakes stand out. Here we are losing marks in the language criteria if we don't write the subject in a sentence. One thing that has in common with the bus is the cost of the trip due to the fact that the taxis are taking a public bike. It is high priced. Okay, so we're trying to use due to the fact that it's a nice linking expression and have in common, you know, again, this, to have something in common, good expressions. This is the same mistake as before, which I'm going to put in red now to really highlight this mistake. We are talking about taxis in general. I think maybe you could make an argument to say the taxi is in Valencia. Okay, but I'm not sure. Or taking a public bike. Now we've gone the other way. This has got too many subjects in this sentence. So we really need to learn. Taking a public bike is a subject. We don't need another subject, it. We can only have one subject in a sentence. Is high priced or highly priced. We don't want that T there. I'll highlight that just so it's clear that I've deleted it. Nevertheless, nice. Then not, there are no so much seats. There are no so much sits. Ooh, this is not very good, is it? I think what they mean is there are not so many seats. But that's, well, it's not very good. It's too many mistakes for C1 level, basically. It's almost like, I think I understand this because I've lived in Spain for many years and I can sort of imagine a Spanish person saying this and understanding it. But we're getting to the point where the mistakes are making me think, what? And I have to read it again. And then you start losing marks because the mistakes are getting to the point where they impede communication. Normally you need... Again, I think maybe the student didn't check this very well because I know this student knows need to. Oh, I know this. Steve, stand up and sometimes you are pushed by. And again, that's the same mistake as before. We don't need an article there. But but we have a good effort a passive there. I quite like that. Okay. There are only a few public transports in Valencia. Okay, here we have the same mistake as before. Public transport options in Valencia. Taking all the points into account, I recommend taking the bus or the subway instead of spending more money in a taxi or an electric scooter. Okay, I think we've got a problem here, haven't we? Pause the video. What's the problem? Tell your teacher. Well, the problem is this was not the question. The question was improve the public transport, not which public transport should I take? That's a completely different question. So the student has forgotten the question a bit, which is going to be a bit of a problem. And in fact, 
where are the improvements? We've got what's good and what's bad. What's good and what's bad. We need some idea for improvements, don't we? This was a, a third of the question. One of the three points you had to talk about. And unsurprisingly, you will know that it is hard to pass the writing if you don't write everything they ask you to write. Valencia has a good communication transport. Communication, I think maybe is a Spanish word coming in here, like communications. Well, I guess it's like a city is well communicated, okay? But we mean a good transport system. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you'd like me to expand on this report. Your teacher has asked you to evaluate it. But do you say to your teacher, please do not hesitate to contact me? I don't think you do. I think we are not really imagining the situation here. You can talk to your teacher, hopefully, or you can give them the report and then they will mark it and say, OK, thank you. Interesting. But please do not hesitate to contact me. This is more like for a formal letter. I don't think that really works. So again, I think criterion B, we're losing some marks for clarity of communication register of communication doesn't quite fit the situation what we've written there so overall this is a student who is still improving this you know obviously if they're doing c1 classes with me they are not they haven't reached c1 level yet they're going for it and they they will pass very soon as i say this in september 2023 but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement here following the advice i've been talking about following the advice in my previous videos if i had to mark this then Remember, we've got four criteria, each out of five. The first one is content. And the big mistake is missing part of the question and sort of missing a bit of the situation of the question. You're supposed to be making suggestions for improvements. You're supposed to be saying things like, maybe we need extra buses on special occasions or we need buses that run more often every five minutes instead of every 10 minutes on special occasions. This is the logical improvement, isn't it? Same here for improvements. If there's not enough seats, maybe we need bigger uh, metro subway carriages or wagons or whatever we call them. And then in the end, the recommendation doesn't quite fit. We're not talking about which public transport a random person should take. We're talking about how to improve it. So for content, because we do have lots of relevant ideas, we have evaluated the bus system and the subway system of the city where you live, I think we can get up to a two. No higher, because as I mentioned, we are missing one of the content points and then we are missing, well, we're missing quite an important one and we're, we've slightly gone by the side of part of the question with not really recommending an improvement at the end. So we're missing a key content point and like an approach to the question like understanding the situation which is so important for all the criteria for communication well i corrected quite a lot in yellow didn't i and this i think being concise we're going to lose a mark there there are some good efforts at a report style language the aim of this report a passive there's not too much first person or second person. Some of the language is a little bit artificial or forced. It maybe requires careful reading. So I don't think we're quite there on communication either. I would give that a two out of five. Thinking about concision and This is, I always feel bad saying this, but natural language, as in long periods with no mistakes, using phrases correctly, this all comes under communication. For organisation, um, I think I think I'd be. I think I think I'd be generous here and say we're just about passing on organization. There's only one obvious mistake with the linking word, which was on the other hand. 
then there's quite a lot that is well linked together and it's an overall logical structure of building up different parts and then the conclusion. So if we're purely talking about organization, I would say, well, as I've been saying, it's logically building up to a conclusion and it's mostly well linked. In terms of language, this is where we're still a bit lower. You can see almost every sentence I'm having to cross things out, things that are not perfectly expressed and some mistakes that are below the C1 level. It's not passing. My doubt is if I'm giving it one or two, if we're in this band of one or two, but I'm thinking probably two because I have still underlined some nice parts and points, some points where it's clear this person has a lot of familiarity with English. It's a good student and I think we're up just about to a two. But some mistakes, what I would consider below C1 level, some unforgivable mistakes, unforgivable, we could call these mistakes. What I did say I would like to come back to with language is think about common mistakes here. And this is for this student, obviously your mistakes will be different, but trying to remember your common mistakes. The no article when talking in general, e.g. we talk about society nowadays, not the society nowadays. And the other one was the it subject. Every clause, more or less, for C1 level has a subject, one subject, which is sometimes it. It is sunny. In other languages, you don't say it is sunny. And really, it's a bit silly, isn't it? What is it? It, the weather, the outside, the world, the sun. What? We don't know what it is, but we say it is sunny because every clause has a subject. That would give us a total of 9 out of 20 or 45% which looks about right. This is not passing C1, this writing, but with a few, you know, bit of practice and a bit of thinking about technique, it could get there. So thinking about this question, I don't want to leave it there. I want to think, hopefully you've done it. What is a better answer then? So what I've done is taking all these into, all these corrections into account, I've changed this into what I'd consider a better report with the same ideas. So we can see the aim of this report is to go over in detail the different public transport systems of the large eastern Spanish city of Valencia. Okay, very clear introduction. There's no mistakes. And you're telling us what you're going to do. Purple means content. So I said purple for content. Okay. To begin with, one of the most used transport systems nowadays is the bus. Valencia has many bus lines that can take you to a lot of different places. Well, I missed one correction. I'm sorry. One crucial point to consider is that in each avenue there are many bus stops with clearly signalled route numbers. I've cut out all of that and just said clearly signalled route numbers because you don't need to tell me. You need to get this bus number to go to this part of the city and then you get on the bus and then you pay your money. And No, clearly signalled, good language, concise. I've got three words, four words, instead of 34. In addition, it's low cost. Okay, so the bus line, we've evaluated the strengths. However, it is always crowded and on special occasions you need to wait for lengthy periods until you can get on the bus. One solution to this problem could be offering more buses on public holidays, such as the Fayas, to ensure that no one has to wait for too long. Great, now I'm answering all the questions. I've got a problem and I've got a proposed solution, which is what we wanted. So more buses on public holidays, little vocabulary as always, great. Likewise, the subway is commonly used, how quick it is, be in another part of the city if you're in a rush, the low cost. Nevertheless, there are not so many seats, so normally you need to stand up and sometimes you are pushed by people. Perhaps more seats could be added to the subway wagons so that the elderly or vulnerable people can always find a place to sit. Again, a clear idea, answering all the question, how to improve it. Taking all the points into account overall, Valencia has a good transport system. However, by implementing these simple changes, it could benefit local residents and tourists to Valencia even more. So I've condensed the conclusion a bit and I'm not saying, um, I don't even remember what it said before. What did it say in the conclusion about, well, if you want to talk to me, getting a taxi, not relevant to this question. 
I've already given all my ideas. By implementing these simple changes, I'm referring to my ideas, it could benefit residents and tourists. And that's what the point of the question is, how to improve public transport system, benefit, improve Valencia, local area. We've answered the question very clearly. I've put it in green, which I normally use to refer to language, because I think this is one of these typical report phrases that you can learn. And the same way, in the same way, you can learn phrases for letters and essays and everything. So learn these phrases, use them correctly. This is how you fit them in. This is how they, they work and they are good for these types of writing. Of course, we could also, just to get all the criteria in there, we could also refer to how this is linked together with ideas like, remember linking doesn't just mean first, second and conclusion. One solution to this problem, what is this? Well, this is me linking back to the problem. Solution linked to the problem, that's how we link ideas. Likewise, a nice, slightly more advanced linking word, nevertheless the same, taking it all into account, however, and then the same here, even more, well, I'm linking it back to my idea of how we're going to improve it. We're not just going to improve it, we're going to improve it even more. It's already good, now it's going to be even better. So I'm linking my ideas together from good to even better. So that is how we would, I would say, write a good report for C1. And that is how an examiner would mark a report. One that probably wouldn't quite pass, but has the germs... The, the you know the, the seeds of good ideas there just some typical mistakes that lots of students make that you need to practice getting better at so you end up with something like this that would be passing thank you i recommend watching the rest of my writing videos and all the other parts of the exam if you want more c1 help goodbye